it's Brittany of BZ Art. Before we start, I just want to point out there are birds in the craft room and they're currently eating a little bit of bribery to try and keep them a bit more quiet, but you might hear them yelling and moving around. And if that bothers you, you might wish to skip this video. You might also hear some traffic noises because I do live on a busy intersection and my windows are currently open. So again, if that really bothers you, you might wish to skip this one. So today, as you've probably seen in the title, we're going to be talking about hand sewing. Now, a lot of people ask me, can I sew this without a sewing machine? And the answer is always going to be yes. The sewing machine doesn't do anything that you can't do by hand. The difference is when you do it by hand, it's going to take you a lot longer and you need to have the skills to make the stitches yourself. On a sewing machine, when you're sewing, a lot of the skill comes from how you manipulate the fabric, uh, how you use the presser foot to adjust your speed properly, things like that. So when you're hand sewing, you need the skills of making the actual stitches yourself. And that can be just a lot of patience, a lot of time investment. Like any other skill, the more you do it, the better you're going to get. So a beginner can get on the sewing machine and just get immediately perfect stitches every time. But if you're hand sewing and you're a beginner, you're not going to get perfect stitches every time. And that's just something that you have to work on. Um, with hand sewing, the goal is going to be to make small, even stitches. And that can be very difficult. Even I really struggle with it because it's not something I do all that often anymore. I used to do it a lot. There's a lot of positives to hand sewing. It is easier to watch TV. I binged every Star Trek episode while hand sewing. Of, yeah, no, I'm a Star Trek nerd. <laughs> um, because you can sit wherever you want. You can take it with you on the bus. You can take it to the park. You don't need to be tied down to electricity and a big sewing machine. Uh, you have more control over the fabric in general. You don't have a machine pulling it at, I don't know, how fast do sewing machines sew? We're just going to say 20 miles an hour. <laughs> I know that's probably not right, but it's a lot easier when it's just you holding it. It's not going to suddenly slip out of your grasp or slide around that much. Uh, you also have the benefit of if you make a mistake, it's a lot easier to pull out these stitches versus the sewing machine. And there are some downsides, of course. It's slower. Uh, it, it might not look as professional. It depends on your talent level with the stitching. It might look handmade. And for some people, that's okay. That's their end goal and that's what they want. Uh, and some people want machine perfection. It's a matter of preference. And another major downside for me is that it can cause repetitive strain injury, which did happen to me when I binge watched all of Star Trek. <laughs> uh, it starts to mess with your fingers, it messes with your wrists, it hurts. So if you're going to be doing a lot of hand sewing, make sure you're taking care of yourself, take frequent breaks, stretch your hands and wrists, fingers and wrists, I guess. Do stretches is what I'm saying. And uh, if you need to, be sure to wear a wrist brace or something like that to help prevent injury. So uh, let's talk about some of the equipment you're going to need. A thimble. This is just a simple leather thimble. I don't know if it'll focus on it. Um, I have covered this one with duct tape. <laughs> and that's just because over time the needle does poke through for me and poke my finger um, so the duct tape just kind of extends the life of the thimble because once I get one that fits I want to keep using it. I also, I don't know if you can see, but I've stitched a little bit on the side of this thimble because it, the size is too big for me. Some people prefer metal thimbles, but I like the control I get with the leather one. And I wear mine on this finger because it's the finger I use to poke through the needle. Uh, I think everyone has their own sewing style. I've seen people sew and hold the needle in a lot of different ways. Uh, for me, this is the one that makes sense. Uh, and of course, you're going to need a sewing needle. You're going to need some thread. Uh, I like to use a higher quality thread when I'm hand sewing. So this is a uh, Guterman, we're going to say. This is one of those cases where you've only ever seen it written. You've never heard it. So we're going to say it's Guterman. I could be wrong. So we're using a slightly higher quality thread. And you might also want some thread gloss. So this is from the company So Fine. Uh, I believe I got it on Etsy. Uh, and it is 
just, it's thread gloss. So it's, it's beeswax, essentially. This one happens to also have coconut oil and fragrance in it. it smells like pina colada. I like it. As you can see, I've used it quite a bit. It's got a lot of thread residue in it. Uh, the thread gloss, gloss will help keep your thread from tangling and making those annoying knots. And I just like the way it smells. <laughs> so just to get started, you're just going to thread your needle. I like to take an amount, uh, probably about my arms spread. If you have a lot of issues with your uh, shoulders, wrists, elbows hurting, using a smaller amount of thread will help because you won't have to move your arm as far, but you'll have to refill your thread <laughs> more often. So keep that in mind. And then I'm just going to tie a knot. And I'll take it and run it through the thread gloss. And to do this, I'm going to mispronounce that every time. To do this, you just pinch your thumb, slide it through. And I'm probably going to go through twice. So for the stingray, we're going to get started on the tail. I don't pin quite as much when I'm hand sewing, but I do a little. So they're just regular pins, like you'd use if you're sewing on the sewing machine. Pin it in a couple spots. And so for plushies, I like to use a back stitch. And a back stitch is you go in or out the back of the fabric back. So that went through both layers. There we go. And then you're going to go about halfway down and in and back out. And you're just going to keep doing that. And as you can see, I'm using the thimble to push it through. I'll eventually let go entirely, push with that, or am I not? I don't know, it depends. And that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and use the back stitch all the way around this. So just like if I was sewing with my machine, I'm going to go ahead and trim the excess around this. I'm not going to get quite as close to the stitches just because they are a little bit more fragile. And I'm going to turn it right side out. And there you have a stingray tail. It's not perfect, like I said. Uh, I'm not as good as hand, hand sewing as I used to be. There are places where you can see it's a little wavy and a little bit uh, uneven, and this waving is is part of... Um, I wasn't pulling it tight enough, I think, when I was sewing it. So there's, it's, there's some issues. But when you turn it right side out, uh, the minky hides a lot of sins. <laughs> and uh, it's a pretty good looking stingray tail. So now I'm going to go ahead and get more thread and then I'm going to sew the two top sides of the body together. Another reason my sewing is a little awkward right now is I'm actually reaching around my tripod to do this with one hand and the other's on the other side. So 
not perfect. That's all right. So I'm actually going to pin the back of these stingray pieces together just to help make sure they don't move around. And be careful you don't stab yourself with those needles that are sticking out. And just like with the tail, I'm going to sew here with the back stitch. I'm leaving a gap to turn it right side out, and I'm going to sew again. Now I've finished this upper body. Again, I'm trimming off some excess of the seam. I'm going to go ahead and undo these pins. And there you go. Top of the stingray. And you can see a little bit of my stitches through there. It would probably be... I don't know if the camera will focus on that. Uh, it would probably be less visible if I didn't use a white thread. Uh, but I wanted a white thread so that you could see on this darker fabric. So now I'm going to go ahead and pin this tail in place. She'll pin it on this part. And then we're going to go ahead and pin this all to the body. All right, so once more, we're just going to keep going at it with the back stitch, and you will probably see me redo my thread a couple times, and nothing special to it. When I get to this area with the tail, since that's a lot of fabric, I might just choose to use a running stitch over it. Uh, it depends on if I'm having trouble or not.
And so now you start to see some of the downside of hand sewing because I have burned through a camera battery already. Um, but this is finished and I'm going to go ahead and trim around the seams like I would with my other plushies. And once we're done with that, I'm going to insert the safety eyes. And to do that, this time I'm using an owl. A-W-L, owl. Sometimes I like to use my scissors, but I figured I haven't done a video showing this, or if I have, it's been a while. So for the owl, you're just going to take it, poke it where you want it, and push it through. And so what this does is it stretches the fabric instead of necessarily ripping it. And that's nice because then there's less chance that the eye will push out as the fabric stretches. But I tend to just clip a very tiny hole and stretch it by pushing it through. So for me, it achieves about the same effect. Uh, if you have a struggle, if you struggle with pushing a hole or cutting a hole that's too big and the eye falls out over time, then owl will be a better option for you. And then I'm just going to trim the back of the safety eye. Ooh. And I find these all over my craft room because I kind of like it. <laughs> uh, you could just catch the other half with your eye or do it in a basket or something like that. But that's not going to happen. But I don't. Because I'm a rebel. And the owl is especially useful with a fraying fabric, like cotton. With cotton, you definitely don't want to cut any holes if you can avoid it. Less fun, right? And now I'm going to use my hemostats to turn the stingray right side out. I'm going to start by grabbing the tail. Now I'm doing this very gently because these are hand sewn stitches. Uh, it, I just don't want to rip them. I don't necessarily think that hand sewing is more delicate. Oops, I left an area open here but I do think you have to be a little bit more mindful because if you do rip a thread, the whole thing can come unraveled very quickly. So I'm just going to fix this little bit here that I, I missed the bottom fabric when I sewed it. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish turning it right side out to the screams of my birds. And there you have one sewn stingray. Whoop. All right, now we're going to do a little bit of top stitching. So on this pattern, you top stitch here and here to differentiate the wings from the body. So you can stuff the body without stuffing the wings, keep them nice and flat. Um, if you're a cockatiel, you could dance back and forth on your water bowl and scream. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this here. This is just a, a piece of the, the stingray and this line will show me where to sew. And this is a water-soluble marker that I'm using to mark it. 
It's not going to show up super well. You might not be able to see it, but I can, which is all that really matters. Is that you can see what you are doing. When my patterns call for top sewing like this, uh, I prefer to use, if I'm going to hand sew, a thread that will match almost exactly. So I have this kind of burgundy pinkish color and I'm going to use that. And for the stitch, I'm going to use a regular running stitch. So a running stitch is just in and out and in and out. Uh, ideally for something like this, as small and close together as you can get it, because it will be something that is going to be, uh, you don't want it to be super visible, ideally. Alternatively, you could make it super visible uh, as a stylistic choice, but if you have too much space between the stitches, you might get some stuffing that will push its way out. So just be mindful of that. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to come in through this opening so that my knot isn't visible on the outside of the fabric. And I'm going to put a pin here to make sure this is laying nice and smooth. I'm going to put a pin on the other side for the same reason. And I'm just going to do the running stitch through here. I've finished that side and I don't want the tail end of this fabric visible or this thread visible so I'm going to go in the fabric and back out. I'm gonna pull it tight just like you would if you were sewing a plushie or stuffing and finishing a plushie and then I'll cut it close and then it kind of pulls itself back into the fabric. So it looks pretty good from the top, as you can see, uh, looks less great from the bottom. Uh, you can definitely see that my stitches aren't super even. Uh, they're not super straight. Uh, again, I don't have a ton of um, practice with this, especially right now, I'm very out of practice. And I could have gone slower, I could have done that a little bit nicer, but for me right now, the goal is just finishing this. It's not necessarily perfection. I just really want you guys to see that the sewing machine doesn't need to limit what you can do. So we're going to do just like we did with the other side. We'll come inside the body of this plush and out to hide the knot in it. And then we're going to go ahead and do another running stitch. So I went off course here a little bit, wasn't paying attention. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and pick this out. So you get to see one of the benefits of hand sewing up close. We'll start over. So I've finished hand sewing that and I'm going to go ahead and stuff the body, which 
involves dragging a giant bag of stuffing over. <laughs> I'm going to stuff this just like I normally would, little pieces at a time. Probably going to end up using my hemostats because I left kind of a small hole. And that's it. Nothing more to it. Just stuffing. Now that we're done with this, I'm going to go ahead and close it using a ladder stitch. And a ladder stitch is what I use to close all my plushies, regardless of whether or not they're hand sewn or machine sewn. And to do this, you're going to come in from the inside of your fabric. I'm going to come across, in, and immediately back out. And repeat that across, in, out. And every now and then you'll pull it tight and that's going to hide this opening. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm probably going to continue it down to about here because I can see a couple visible stitches and that'll just kind of hide those a little bit better. And then I will tie a knot, insert it in, pull it tight and cut it so you don't see the tail end of that string again. And there you have it, one completed stingray. It doesn't look a whole lot different than my machine sewn ones. Even this uh, hand stitching down here, it gets kind of hidden by the stuffing. Uh, I might go in and reinforce the tail just because uh, it's definitely a weak point, especially with the hand sewing. Like I said, if you rip one stitch, the whole thing can kind of unravel pretty quickly. But other than that, I mean, there you have it. You don't need a sewing machine for this at all. And I chose the Stingray just because it's a very simple plush, so it's a lot faster. Uh, I think this video is probably about an hour before editing. Won't be that long for you. <laughs> uh, so it uh, may be a little bit longer than an hour even. So it definitely took me a lot longer than it would to make a Stingray on my sewing machine, but uh, I could have done this you know, sitting in a park, like I said, or outside with the dog, I don't need the sewing machine. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't find some finishing touches for this, and then it's done. So now this stingray, I think, has turned into an elegant little stingray. It has some fabric flowers. These ones have pearls and gems in the middle. This one just has one little pearl and then some cascading pearls down its back. So I think that that is quite gorgeous. And you will see photos of this little guy or gal or non-binary pal available, uh, be available in my shop shortly after the video is released. And that's all there is to it. I hope you guys liked this. I hope this helped you guys, especially those of you who have been struggling translating some of my instructional videos to hand sewing. Uh, and again, I'm not the expert on hand sewing. If you want to learn more, 
There's a lot of tutorials out there. There are more stitches you could try. You might like some of those better. And um, just in general, hope you guys have fun. Stay safe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.